What's up everybody? We got Shane here and super rad dude. This tour is gonna we're gonna we're gonna show his van off. We're gonna tell his story a little bit, but I just got a lot of respect for this cat right here and I, I really want to tell his story. But first we're gonna check out his van, so let's get into that. What's up? My name is Shane. This is my 2006 Econo Line van. Let's check it out. So we'll start with the exterior. Up top, I've got the light bar right here. It's pretty cool for off-roading. I've got a side light, security light on the side here. Just flip the switch, those come on, they light up the whole area. Up top, I have a Dometic AC unit, which works really well for my dog, Millie. Come around back, I've got 600 watts of solar on the roof, which gives me plenty of power. So on this side, we've got the water fill, and that connects to a 40 gallon water tank on the inside. So in the back here, we've got the freezer. This is actually Millie's freezer. This is where I keep all of her dog food. She does eat the farmer's dog. So, and then this section is for my ice cream. Gotta have ice cream. Over here, I've got all my tools. And then we've got a shovel over here. We know what that's for. On this side here is where I keep my propane tank. Easy to pull in and out. Got my hiking shoes. Everything that you need, extra pair of shoes. Fire extinguisher. This is super important when you're out in the middle of nowhere. So in the back, I've got my electrical system. It's still not all together completely. I've only been on the road for two weeks now, but it is a full Victron system. It's got 600 amp hours of batteries and it's a pretty impressive system. It powers all of my stuff, my freezer, my fridge, and my AC unit on the roof. Yeah, on top I've got a few other things, an extension cord, got all my hiking gear in the back over there. We've got a foam roller, you know, always good to have. So that's it with the exterior. Let's go inside to the interior. This is my little entryway. Um, I sit here a lot. Got all my dog stuff right here, easy to grab. My water bottles, nice and easy to grab. And then down here is my where I keep my seltzer. Um, I drink probably a 12 pack of seltzer a day. I don't drink alcohol, so that's, I don't consider it a problem. <laughs> this is my 12 volt refrigerator, and the back is the freezer. I've got a locking slider. I've got a locking slider down here. You just hit the little lever, pull the fridge on out, slides out. Got these two latches, and open up the fridge. Keep all my oat milks, my seltzers, and anything that I need to eat in there. This is my fridge. Millie's is in the back. Slides back. With the flooring, I did a half inch subfloor, and then I just threw in some life proof flooring that you'd buy from Home Depot. I actually didn't even use a full box. I used like a quarter of a box just to cover this small area here. So this is my kitchen. I have a propane oven and burner. It's real easy to take in and out, which is what I wanted. I like to cook outside versus cooking inside. It gets really hot in here when you cook inside, but it's got the two burner on top and then it's got the oven right here. I love baking. Above that is just kind of like my junk drawer. I kind of have a little bit of everything in there. Medicine, vitamins, soap, salts, bananas. I've got nine millimeter in here. You need that. In the back here, I've got tea, I've got honey. Up top, I've got my Yeti mug. This thing has been with me through my entire van life journey for the past three years. This thing is awesome. <laughs> got my little camp stove up top. I don't put anything away, usually. Um, I just kind of shove it up here. At nighttime, I'll put my headlamp on. Real simple. I've got my chargers right here to charge my USBs. 
This little switch is for my water. If you wanna turn the water on, just flip that switch. My sink is a cool little round sink and it gets the job done plenty. We've got the faucet up top here. Underneath here is just a storage area where I have my oatmeal, pastas. So paper towels are underneath. I stopped using paper towels like five years ago, but since I've been living in the van, I bought a roll and it's just easier to wipe the plates down before you start cleaning them because it is more difficult to clean a dish with cold water versus hot water. I don't have any hot water in here. Underneath here is where I keep all my pans, my skillets, my baking sheets are all down there. Really simple. Underneath my seat here is a storage area, which is pretty much packed to the brim. I do stick some plates and stuff in there also. There's a battery charger in there and um, a blender, things of that nature. Up top here is my Dometic AC unit. My honest opinion about this AC unit, it works well, but it doesn't work as good as a mini split wood or like a household AC unit would. These AC units strictly blow cold air. So if you're underneath of it in this area, you're fine. But in the back of the van, you actually can't feel it. The price of the AC unit was $3,000. Would I put another one in a van like this? Probably not. I would probably go with a mini split or something of that nature. These things, they work, it gets the job done, but it's not worth the $3,000 to me. The vehicle is actually a passenger van vehicle, so it did come with a rear AC in the back. Most people just delete it, so they take the AC out completely and then they just cap off the lines and then recharge the vehicle. I decided to keep the AC unit in the back. So down here, is the AC unit has been rerouted. So when my dog is actually laying on the ground here, it's a, it's a lot cooler for her down here than it is in the back of the vehicle. And I also ducked it through this hose here. So while I'm driving, I can actually put it under my shirt or I can face it towards her and blow cold air on her as we're driving. It's just a little cool feature I decided to add in the van. So on this side is my pantry. Keep um, lots of cups and things of that nature in here. Keep all my salts, all my protein powders and things like that up here. Down here is just a little storage cubby. Over here is my 12 volt marine fan. We'll put a link in the description. This fan, in my opinion, is better than the Max Air fan. It's got more power than the Max Air fan and it actually rotates also when you flip the switch in the back. So if you were to put a Max Air fan in and one of these on the inside, I think it would make the van so much cooler. So my bed is actually six foot two this way and it's a little bit more than three foot wide this way, close to four foot. It made the most sense for me to put my clothes right here. It just kind of keeps everything out of the way and I didn't need this much space side to side. It's just me and Millie in here. So I decided to put my closet right here. And what's cool is underneath is actually where I keep all my music stuff. My guitar's right here, it easily slides out. I've got my case with all my stuff in the back. So when I wanna play, I just pull it out real quick and it keeps it nice and safe in the back. It's actually almost like it's in its case. I went with the low roof vehicle this time around because I wanted to save money and my dog overheats very easily and I wanted to spend the money on the AC unit and the electrical rather than buying the high roof van. Um, it's just me and her in here and it's plenty of space. So I started living in a van in 2019. I lived in a high roof Sprinter van in 2013. I traveled for an entire year and I lived out of that van for a year and a half. During that time, I met a bunch of different builders and I just got super inspired to make this lifestyle happen for others. 
So I decided to get off the road and I got a place and I started bu I started building out vans for people. And now I'm actually, we've come full circle because I've done six or seven builds and now I'm actually living back on the road again. Doing it a little bit differently this time. Um, the first time around I had this big, beautiful, fancy van I was getting all this attention with on you know Instagram YouTube all that stuff and it really wasn't practical for what I needed and so with this time around with this van everything that's in here is practical for me it's specifically built for me it's not built for anyone else this oven and everything this whole entire layout where I'm sitting it's specifically designed for how I live my first build was kind of tailored towards social media. Um, when you walk in, you saw the beautiful green tiles and it was really, it was really fancy looking and it was just not what I needed. And so with this one, I also wanted to show that you don't need a big fancy van to go out and live van life. You literally can get a crappy van and just put a mattress on the inside. It's really about the experience and it's about the people that you meet on the road. It's not about having this big fancy van. I know people who have these $100,000 vans who, and then I know people who have $12,000 vans and I guarantee you they're all having the same exact experience. So with this van, it was about spending the least amount of money as I can, making it comfortable for my dog. My dog's comfort comes first. And then it was just about having the basic needs of what I need, and that's not much. Just a cooler, an oven, and a sink. That's it, <laughs> that's all I need. The total cost of the vehicle was, with the build, it was $27,000. I spent $11,000 on the vehicle itself, and then the rest went into the build. In materials, I. I'm under $3,000 in materials. That That's including the two fridges and the oven and all of that. The most expensive part of the build is the AC unit and the electrical system. The electrical system, I did do a little bit of overkill on. Um, I have 600 amp hours of lithium batteries, which is very expensive. You wouldn't necessarily need that much power in a simple build but I do have the AC unit and the two fridges going at all times so I wanted as much power as I possibly could the electrical system I've actually designed to be taken out so the next build that I do I will actually be sliding the electrical system out and putting that into that build and then building a much smaller system for here and replacing the AC unit with max air fan instead so it's a it'll be a lot more affordable at that point, the build will be sub $20,000 to do this build. So the AC system with the electrical system is around $14,000. If I could go back and do it all over again, I would honestly spend the least amount of money on the build, more money on the vehicle, getting a reliable vehicle. Because if you don't have a reliable vehicle, you're not getting anywhere. So I would spend more money on the vehicle itself, less money on the build, and I would just honestly send it with, with whatever I had and go figure it out. I would go to California and get a job somewhere, a part-time job somewhere, and then eventually figure it out. With how I originally did van life, I kind of did it overkill, but I ended up selling my van, my first van that I built, and making all my money back, and including the money that I used to travel for a year. So everything worked out in the end, but not everybody has those skills to build these vans like that. So if you're wanting to get in a van life and you don't have a lot of money, what I would do the first step is trading in whatever vehicle you have now and get the van. Even if you're not living in it, you're still driving the van around, you're still you still have the van even if it's still parked in your parents driveway for a year at least you have the van and you have your foot in the door and then you start making a plan on how you're going to build it out i would focus more on the electrical side of things getting a good electrical system relying on things like um, battery banks like the jackery or the yeti 
are very useful but having a good solar system on the roof and a good battery bank it just it makes your experience with van life that much better it's tough when things are constantly running out of battery or constantly dying on you when you have dishes to do and you go and turn the switch on and nothing comes on so it's nice to always have that in the always have that comfort of having enough electrical i do have a 25 foot schoolie that i'm going to be building out in the next couple months i'm actually taking that to alamosa and i'll be building that out there in the desert and my plans for that are to live in it for a short while and then i'm actually going to be selling the bus and then figuring things out from there my name is shane dennis if you want to follow my journey you can find all my links in the description my business is Dogwood Conversions. I'm available to do van builds and bus builds, and I'll be traveling for the next couple months, so follow along. Thanks for watching my tour. I'll see you later.